I do. Today we're doing a long awaited video to change the front brakes on the BMW S1000R. I've got myself some front brakes, two sets of. Bikes out here on paddock stands and we're going to be changing in here. So I'm going to talk you through roughly how I do it. Again, I've said this before in the last video I did with the rear brakes, I'm no mechanic. I just picked these bits and bobs up over the years of playing with my bikes. I've got a Haynes manual which I use for reference. So I will be referring to that for the torque. The torque just for incidentally for the bolts is 38 newton meters. Got the other camera on the tripod to give you a close up of what I'm doing. Nice simple job, but it's something I need to do. I'm 25,000 miles now on this and the pads are finally shot, so time to do them. So if you want to see how I'll do the front brakes on the BMW S1000R, stick around and watch this. Right then, so the first job's going to be to get the old pads out. So, I'm going to show you this side first. The other side's going to be exactly the same, so I won't bother showing you both sides. But the first job is to get yourself a 13mm socket and undo the two caliper mounting bracket bolts. There's one at the bottom, one at the top. Just be careful when you do the top one. because the ABS speed sensor wire clips into the same clip here, just up on the brake hose, so I unclip that, just to give me a little bit more room. You should be able to see this on that camera. Yeah. So I'm just going to undo the bolts. Get the top one out. I'll give that a clean and some new copper crest before I put it back in. We get the bottom one out now. There's the bottom one out. Again, I'll give that a clean and a lube up before I put it back in. So now we've got the bolts out, the caliper should just slide off the disc. Mine are quite dirty and corroded up inside there. So they're a bit stuck onto the disc. Well, that's coming off quite easy actually. So just rock it off the pit, disc. Give it a push just to push the calipers back in. And then in there, let's just check you can see. Yeah, in there, you've got two pads, the top and the bottom. Now, normally if you were just cleaning this out, you'd remove them but keep them in order so you know what was the top and what was the bottom. But on this one, because I'm binning them, I'm not really that bothered. So I think the first thing to do is get a screwdriver against the old pads and push the old pittons back in. So we've got plenty of room, and then we'll start removing these clips. So I'll just go and fetch a screwdriver and we'll push the pads back. Right then, so I'm just going to waggle the screwdriver. Bloody hell, they are corroded. You can see that in there. All this crud. From, uh, I ride all year, so that's probably where all this has come from. And the fact that I've done 25,000 miles on these pads. I'm just going to gently push the pads back in so the pistons are fully in. So therefore I've got room for the new pads, which are obviously nice and thick and full of plenty of meat so just a gentle squeeze they will go back it's that side just double check on the top make sure they're all in right so they're back as full of as they'll go so it should have nice loads of room now for the new pads to go in so i'm just going to show you now how to set the pads out so these clips here you push them in and there's a little pin here Pull the pin out like that. Done. Put that to one side. Remove the clip out of the way. Again, I'm going to clean all this up. And then the pads should pop out. So that one's out. That one's out. Exactly the same on the bottom. So, like I said, push the pin, the spring. Push it into the body of the caliper, push it in, like that. Get hold of the pin. Should be able to do it with your fingers. If you can't, you might have to go and get a set of pliers. This one's a little bit stiff. It's probably because it just needs a clean, but give it a little wiggle. There we are, she's out now. So push that in and the pin's free again. The clip just falls away. Then we'll just dislodge these pads. Yeah. 
Right, just while I show you the pads, I'm just going to rest that back on there so I don't stress the brake hose. Put it back on the two lugs. There we are. So let's have a little look at these pads. I mean, you can see there's not a lot left on there. There is the wear indicator here. Whether that picks it up on this camera or not, I don't really know. But they're, they're pretty knackered, they are. Well dirtied up. These are official Brembo pads that are part of the Brembo when I got the bike. That's the front pads removed. They're only fit for one place, which is the bin. Next job, we'll just screw a bit of brake cleaner and a cloth in here and clean all this out. Then we'll put the new pads in. So, I use Holtz brake cleaner. I picked this up at a bike show. Again, I'm not endorsing the product. You can use any product you want, but I bought this at a bike show for three quid. Give it a good shake up. And then with a microfiber cloth or whatever cloth you choose to use, just give all this a squirt in here and give it all a good rub round. See, so just get it in there. This eats away all the contaminants, brake dust, that kind of thing. And then we just get a microfiber cloth and just give it all a good rub round. And it'll blow the dust out. You can use an old toothbrush if you want. I haven't got one. The one, the old toothbrush I have, I use for cleaning my chain at the moment. So, but we're getting by. We don't need it. This is all nice and clean now. So there we go. Just wiped out the caliper. All nice and clean in there as well. So I'm just going to rest that again back on here, and I'll show you the new pads. So the new pads on my bike. The BMW S1000R 2016 model, this is, is the 870HS front. These are SBS pads. Before we put them in though, just don't forget to clean up your pins. Again, same process. A little bit of Holtz clean on them. A little rub. Again, there's no point putting them in. They're all covered in gunk. So as with any brake pads you reinstall, you should always put a bit of copper crest on them. Eliminates brake squeal, helps them move about within the caliper, and again, it says on there prevents brake squeal. Anti seize compound, basically. And it's a non melting, anti seize, lead free lube. Perfect stuff for this job. So, what I'll do is I'll work on just one set at a time, just make life a bit easier. So, get me pad, bit of copper crest, and I'll rub it on the back. Simple as that. And while I'm here, put a little bit on the edge of the actual backing material where it touches the points on the caliper. Don't get any of this. Don't get any of this on the front surface because that'll be eliminating the point of the brakes. Don't need a lot. A little dab will do you. What program's that off? Put it in the comments. A little dab will do you. Bring your caliper back in. Then if you look in here, at the bottom of turning over, you've got these tabs here. The pad rests on top of the pad. And don't forget, it's backing plate to the edge. So the friction material should be in the middle. Shouldn't have to say that, but you never know. So we get one pad. Slide it in. Lovely. I'm just going to hold that still with my finger underneath. And I get the second pad. Put the Hendrix on the radio. Second pad goes in. Can you see them in there? There we go. See the two pads. Right. Next job is to bring your spring in. At the bottom of your spring, there's a little tab there. That sits inside the body, and you just push it over the top like so. Then you get your pin. I've put a little bob of grease on my pin, and there's a hole on the side. Push it through the hole while holding your pin down, your spring down. Push it all the way through. 
a little bit fiddly. Make sure you wipe all the grease off your fingers. So you should have now, as I can see on that camera screen, you should have your spring in nice and tight with the pin back through that hole with the top there. Move my fingers out of the way, see? And that is basically a set of pads in place. Yeah? So I'm just going to repeat the process now for the bottom to make sure they're bedded all nice and neat. So use your screwdriver again, but be really gentle. Just make sure they're nice and bedded against the piston. Job done. So I repeat the process on the bottom one, and put it back on. I just put a bit of copper press on my pin there. I did that on the other one, but I don't think I showed it here. Only a thin smear. So for the bottom one, again, I'll just talk you through it again. Get hold of a pad, slide it in, so you can feel it home. I'll just put my finger on the bottom there to keep that in place. Next pad. Turn that, oh no. Turn over. There's my pads in place. You should see that in there. And I get my spring. That little tab there tucks down in here. It's at the body of the caliper. Nothing, nowhere for it special is at the bottom of the caliper in the body itself. Give it a good spring back and the hole, push your pin through. Done. I'll just turn it over and show you. To the other side that. Then I'm just going to use my screwdriver again just to make sure that these are rested in to the correct locations. They're as far back as they can go. That gap there should be nice and simple for your disc. This is job done. So, <clears throat> so now you've got it all in. And slide it back over your disc. It can be slightly fiddly sometimes, but that's gone on a treat. Put the caliper back onto the two mounting lugs off the bracket. That is done. This is your ABS speed warning sensor here. It's got a little bracket, so that needs to go on there as well. But before we put it all back together, I'm just going to clean these bolts up, like I said, with a bit more of a cleaner. Right then. So now we've got the bolt nice and clean. I'm just going to put a nice clean splodge of copper crest on it. One on the bottom. Just do it up finger tight for now because we'll get the torque wrench in a moment. And then the top one. Put a bit of copper crest on the shaft. Stop it corroding up and sticking in the future. When you put the top one back on, just make sure you've got that ring back in the correct place. The bolt goes through the ring. Job done. While I'm here, I'm just going to clip the little clip on back to the brake hose. So that keeps me ABS speed sensor wire all nice and neat. It just follows the pattern of the brake hose down. Easy. So that's it really, there are the new pads in place, the bolts are all back in. These need tightening up to 38 newton metres, which is what we're going to do now. So you get the torque wrench, click them up, <clears throat> and that is it. It's exactly the same process for the other side. I will do the other side next. I might leave the camera running to see it, but I'm not going to talk you through it as such. I'll see what the footage is like, and if I use it as a little montage with a bit of music, I will. If not, you've got the gist. So. Any questions on this, go and speak to a trained mechanic, if that's my recommendation. Get yourself a Haynes manual, this is a very simple process which is explained in there. I can't see any complications for you really, but again, I'm no trained mechanic, I will stress that. If you choose to do your brakes off this video, then that, that's your own behalf really. So just get the torque wrench, do these up to 38 Newton meters, that's complete. Right, so we've got my torque wrench, I've got my adapter piece, because my torque wrench is a one half inch drive and my socket's only three quarter. So click that on there, 13 mil again, click that on there. This scale here, you set this to the correct torque that you need it to, put the pinch bolt on, and then it goes, clicks when it's done. So I'm gonna do that now. Right, so that's 38 newton meters on the scale. When it clicks, that's the job done. Never over tighten your caliper bolts, because all you do is you stress the threads, and it weakens them. So just to clarify that, 38, 38, job done. Right, so that's the gist of how I changed my front brake pads on the BMW S1000R. Just again, like I say, I ain't no train mechanic. So if you've 
done this off this video so on your own behalf. But what I will say is before you go out, oh, I'm just coming around this way so you can see. You need to give your front brake a bit of a pump because see how it's it's really quite slack. So give it a good few pumps so you can feel the pads bed up against the disc. There you go, nice and firm. Yep. And then just be careful on your first couple of runs, make sure you bed them in nicely. They usually take about 100, 200 miles to bed in nicely. Just reassure you do that with your pads, because otherwise you're going to reach for the brake and nothing. So, job done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.